Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tosin for those that are new here. In today's video, as you could have seen from the title, I don't even know how I'm going to title this video, but I'm going to be talking about something that's actually really dear to my heart. And I'm just going to give you a background story of why I'm doing this video and then we'll just go right into the video, okay? So, um, I think about a couple of weeks ago, someone sent me a message on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, as you're watching this video, just bring out your phone. You know, if you're watching me via your phone, just post it and go on Instagram. My handles will be here and then you guys can follow my Instagram just so that um how would i say it you're just more up to date with things that i do instead of just waiting till i upload a video yeah so back to my story so someone had messaged me on instagram talking about how you know she's born again she's been born again for a while it's not she's not a new convert per se but she's not a baby christian let me put it that way and you know she's she has this friend that they attend her church and she doesn't like the way they dress and you know they one of them has an affair with a married man is is you know not like um she didn't know she's how would i say comfortably dating a married man you know there are people that they're in the world and she was just really concerned and she was like you know she cut them off and you know seeing that they're supposed to be believers like they, they they say that they love god but they are still doing this thing so they're still dressing extremely decently they are this person in particular this girl in particular is still dating someone's husband and she's aware and she's not willing to you know let it go so when she was saying all those things my first instinct was you know did you have a talk with her and then I asked her and I'm like, you know, did you have a talk with her? And she was like, I think she said, if I'm not mistaken, she sort of did. But, you know, they gave her this kind of maybe they told her off or said something about maybe nobody holy passed. Like, you know, no one is holiest. You know, something along those lines, something like that. So that's what the response that she got. And then it just took me back to, let me say, seven, eight years ago with my own personal experience with a situation like this now to the glory of god i think i've been born again for about 11 years now and i've shared my salvation story before and i talked about it as well like when i first gave my life to christ i used to you know i i would just you know cut everybody off and in that moment it was i felt it was the best decision for me to do because i was in an environment i wasn't even mature enough spiritually to be able to um how would i say half people around me that were doing things that i was trying to get away from so that was then so about seven eight years ago it just reminded me of a personal encounter that i had with god and i'm just going to tell you how the encounter was and then hopefully you can infer upon that so seven years ago i had this friend and she's still my friend today to the glory of god and i remember that you know i was you know when you know when you first give your life to christ after let me say three years you're very on fire for god now you know you know your triggers you know like you've been like god has helped you to sustain your relationship with him so i felt like you know she was just one friend that i loved so much and you know i felt like she was you know dabbling and saying not even you know obviously as a young person young adult i'm talking about ages let me say 20 to 25 like a lot of guys are going to be on your case you know like you're going to have a lot of toasters you're going to have a lot of suitors and including married men and that's just the irony and this girl in particular then it wasn't just married men it was anybody she was more to dating so forget even the married men that were you know suitors she was dating like maybe four or five guys at the same time and i'm not kidding you guys and when i say date i don't just mean like you know she's maybe just spending time with them taking their money you know or whatnot she was having sexual relationships with them she was including married people she was you know she was in the middle of a lot of drama and obviously you know sometimes when you feel like god has helped you to maybe come out of a situation if you're not careful you may i say this in the most loving way i don't mean like you're being judgmental because i know people throw that word loosely i'll probably even do a video about what exactly it means to judge people and what it doesn't was story for another day and you know like i just i just started felt like i started feeling irritable towards her and i used to justify it and i used to say like you know how the bible says that like you know you should have zero tolerance for sin you should you know 
when people when sin is done around you you should you know he's like you know the story of joseph's like how can i do this wicked thing and sin against my god you know so for me it was how can you you know how can you live your life like this how can you comfortably be destroying marriages you know that was just the way i was thinking and so I, I had so much irritation for this person like i loved her when she was around me but when i know that maybe she's texting the guys or i see that maybe she has something new like maybe a new designer bag or shoe and i obviously know it's the guy that got it for her i'll be like you're just wasting your life away and i had this strong belief system that you know what karma is real you know it's different if you're ignorant but when you know better and you're doing it i just then i felt like you know judgment is coming soon like god is really going to teach this girl a lesson so fast forward let me say a year further into when i realized that that's what she was into and you know i had so much concern for her i used to actually pray for her and this is just me being real i know that when i pray i tell god that god i love this person so much while like childhood friends i don't want this person to miss heaven i want this person to um you know like live a life for god and i don't want a situation where you know how they say that like 20 bishop Oedipo used to say that 20 friends don't play for 20 years that thing is so true i don't want a situation where life would draw us apart that i would get to a point where I'm not able to sustain a friendship with her because of her lifestyle. I didn't want it to get to that point. So I just used to pray for her like randomly. Not like I used to pray like, you know, intercede for like hours. I just used to pray for her. Fast forward one day, I'm sleeping. So I, I slept and I had a dream. And this was like, I think it was, I would say when 2019 now. So maybe 2012. I would say 2012. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, so I'll say 2012. I remember that I was sleeping, and that period of my life, God was really like honing my would I say my dream life. He was really teaching me, you know, when He's the one that is talking to me through my dreams. So it, I had really graphic dreams that period of my life, and I remember that that day I dreamt that it was rapture, and this is one of many dreams that I had about rapture. So I remember that that it was rapture, like there was a huge gate, and it was like there was so much chaos. Yeah, there was so much chaos. People were running up and down. I was running, you know, I was looking for... So the way the gates were... So let's say this was the gates. People that made heaven were behind the gates. People that did not make heaven were outside the gates, like running helter-skelter. So I remember that in that dream, she was out on the other side of the gate. She was running and I was holding on so tightly to the gate. Like everyone on the at, that was holding the gates was, you know, they were happy. They were saying, but I had so much sadness in my heart. Like... And in the dream, I was crying. I was saying that, God, I don't want this person to, you know, go to hell. And I was just saying that, no, God, like, please, just... And even that dream, now I'm, you know, speaking. I remember that day, it just real made me realize how much I genuinely loved that person. Because even in my subconscious, I had so much... I was so broken in my spirit when I realized that this person was going through, you know, was experiencing the chaos and everything. And I remember that I was crying so hard and then... In the dream, it was like God appeared to me and it was like, you're crying so hard, why are you crying? And in the dream, I was like, no, this is my friend, she's on the other side of the gate, you know. And then in that dream, God told me that, when have you ever shared the gospel with her? And I remember that I was taking her back. In that dream, like God was telling me that you had so much passion, you had so much access to this person, but you never, you never, I, I would say like how God was telling me in that dream is like, I never share the gospel with that person the way the passion that i had for her salvation i never communicated it with her exactly that was how it was like i never shared the gospel with her i never told her about god's love even if i felt like she knew because i felt like we we're both from christian homes i never intentionally helped her to grow saying that in quotes i was a more mature christian then and he in the dream was like god was telling me like you're that's not what are you crying about like when you had the opportunity to improve this person's life you didn't now you it felt like i was accountable not like i was accountable for our salvation because it's only the holy spirit that does that but it was like i had the capacity to help or i had the capacity to water that plant but i didn't you know how the bible says that paul planted apollo water but it's god that gives increase like you do your job of planting you do your job of watering let god do the increase or it's like let me just even use a normal plant like so you know you buy a plant you have a seed you water it if there's no sun photosynthesis the plant may not grow but that is none of your business if the sun shines or not your job is to water that plant so when i woke up from that dream i woke up with so much fear in my heart i woke up in with so much fear in my heart in the sense of i had a responsibility as a believer and i did not extend that same grace that i had received to another person 
So I instantly I sent her a text message and I'm like, I don't care if you don't talk to me again after today. But I want you to know that I told her the dream. I told her this is exactly the dream I had. But I'll be damned if I'm not honest with you about this lifestyle that you're living. I'll be damned if I don't, you know, tell you that Jesus loves you. I'll be damned if I don't tell you that what you're doing is a sin. I'm not going to tell you that and say that, oh, because you're my friend, I don't want to be judgmental. You can go on and, you know, have sex with all the married men. You can keep on lying. You can keep on stealing. You can keep on doing everything. I say, oh, I still love you. Um, I don't want to be judgmental. I'm, I'm equally a party to that sin. That's what it is. So I told her, I said, you know how much I love you? I love you with the love of God. And from she was just like, thank you. Obviously, I, I'm, I, I'm not sure because I think I sent her a message about maybe like 5 a.m. in the morning or 6 a.m. in the morning. And then it was the day I was over, I think, BBM. I'm not sure I had an iPhone then. So I think it was BBM, yes. So I'm not sure if she was being dismissive. But I remember that that day, I made a promise in my heart that you see this person, so as long as God keeps sustaining me, I'm going to like, I don't want to, you know, make, put myself on a pedestal that God did not put me and make, like say, make her my personal project. But I said that I was going to extend the grace that I received as salvation to this person. Every opportunity to share the gospel with this person, I'll share the gospel with this person till it becomes part and parcel of them. Till this person begins to understand that God loves God loves them. Till this person begins to understand that this is right and this is wrong. And sometimes they even do. They are just clouded by the desires of their hearts. They're just clouded by, you know, greed. They're just clouded by bad habits. They're just maybe even upbringing. You don't know the kind of upbringing they had. Maybe they tell their parents suffer so much and you don't want to have that kind of life. And they feel like the only way they can, you know, escape that is to you know maybe obtain things from men and I, this this scenario i'm using is the one that happened to me yours can be anything else it can be a friend that forges papers at work it can be someone that always goes late to work it can be a friend that you know that that person is just person is just lazy like person just just a freeloader the person doesn't want to do anything with their life the person is just lazy it can be anything this was just the scenario that resonated with me with the message that the lady sent to me on Instagram. So I just decided in my heart that, you know what, I'm going to keep sharing the word of God with this person. I'm going, if I see any, let the person tell me that this person is too much. But at least I know that I have fulfilled God's call for this person in my life. Like, all my responsibility as a believer to love this person, to pray for this person, not just in my heart, but let the person be aware that, you know that if they need a prayer partner, they can call me by 3 a.m. in the morning I'll be there. I won't look at them in such a way that maybe they will feel belittled. I want them to know that they, I love them so much with the love of God. And I continued doing that and doing that. And I started realizing that on the person's own, it's like the Holy Spirit started doing that work in the person's life. This person started, I noticed that the person will ask me, oh, when are you having this program in your church? They want to accompany me. I noticed that this person started buying books. I noticed that this person, you know, stopped just... Suddenly just stopped, you know, I don't know what God did. I don't know how God operated her. I don't know how God taught her a lesson in that way. But I know that it, the person just stopped doing all the things that I had issues with, at least to the best of my knowledge. I don't, I mean, I'm not God, so I'm always going to leave that disclaimer. But based on the Bible says, by their fruit, you shall know them. This person doing, stopped doing all these things. And I had so much joy in my heart that because what I've learned about Christians is that we believers always attack or we always have an issue with the output, we forget that garbage in, garbage out. If someone is doing something that is in quote a sin that is ungodly, it's not really about the sin, it's about what's the content of the person's heart. So, what, why don't you preach Jesus to the person and you watch positive fruits keep coming out? So, if you have someone that maybe say you feel like the person is so profane, the person always uses very profane words, the person dresses in, in a way that is lustful to, just to attract the opposite sex or even the same sex in this generation anything like the person is just maybe worldly your job is not to say maybe tell them um oh oh your wearing is bad it's like someone that does not know any better yet you're trying to shove the truth down their truth even when it's not intentional do you know that one thing i've learned is that when someone is worldly or living a worldly life, so whatever it is that they do, so the moment, no matter how lovingly, if you like send them a message and say, hey sweetie, please, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but I think that, you know, as a Christian, especially when the person professes that they're Christians, as a Christian, what you're wearing is, I think it's a bit indecent, I mean, I can see all your boobage out. The first thing they'll tell you is mind your business. After, especially this generation, after they tell you to mind your business, the second thing, they'll probably block you or they'll 
you know if the person even respects you as a person the person may just ignore you and they'll probably be thinking about of Mayweather. who does she think she is she thinks she's better than everybody that's the first response of worldliness I i'm just going to be very honest with you that's the first response of worldliness worldly people or people that are struggling with any form of worldly desires their first response is to first of all start questioning your motive you're not going to see that maybe sandra really loves me that's why she's telling me the truth or they're not going to be intrusive and say mm, actually maybe i didn't make a good decision maybe i could have you know said something better maybe i could have said the truth in that scenario maybe i should have won what i wore they won't take it that way you only take someone that has a teachable spirit someone that has a humble heart someone that actually maybe even knows better but still finds themselves struggling so let's say for instance i'm struggling with let me see i'm always having sex with my boyfriend and i know that is wrong because it's premarital sex and someone calls me and says tosin why are you doing this because i know better i may say thank you so much but i'm really struggling like i don't know every time i try something keeps pulling me back i keep going back it's different when the person knows better but if the person doesn't know better the first thing is don't judge a man because he's seen differently than you no so i want you to understand that anytime you're in any capacity to enlighten somebody you're in any capacity to correct somebody because the bible says that iron sharpening iron see we are believers not see there's no undercover christian you can't be born again and your light will not be blazing. It's an absolute lie of the devil. When people tell you, oh, I'm born again, you don't know God sees my heart. The outward man shows, like you would, if someone is truly born again, you would, you can tell. I'm not talking about maybe the person has a good heart. Everybody has a good heart. Fair enough. You know what I mean? I'm not talking about that. Like, if you are truly, truly on fire for God, you love God, your fruits will show. It's like an anathema to think that it wouldn't show. It, your fruits really would show. So, as in, when anytime you're in that capacity to enlighten somebody, even when you're doing it in love, ensure that you preach Jesus. Ensure that you preach Jesus. I always tell people this. If I see someone that maybe, I know that a lot of people are, maybe people think that the person is an outcast, the person is living a sinful life for whatever, maybe in my church, in my family, in my friendship. I make that person my friend before I even start to before I start to share them anything about because if you look at the Bible, every opportunity Jesus had to share the gospel. He fed them, he told them stories, he told them parables. Now let's bring it to 2019. You make that person your friend, you let the person know you genuinely care about them, you genuinely care about the salvation of their soul, you genuinely care about eternity. It's even more difficult right when the person doesn't know anything about god do you understand what i'm saying it's more difficult when the person doesn't know anything about god and especially when you're in a land like maybe say you're in england or any, anywhere where it's a multicultural environment like i have friends here that they're not christians they're probably atheists if i have a conversation with them they probably want to argue with me but i'm not going to put myself in a position to argue with anybody so i make them my friend i invite them for events i get them lunch i tell them where to buy nice things to so say i like your makeup oh i got it from here to so say i like this mm. so, so what did you do? i always make sure that i'm a resource first i'm a friend first so my advice to that lady that sent me that message was you know what why don't you intercede for these people begin to pray for them and i want to see them something like, intercession is not a joke intercession is not just it's actively the same way you are praying for yourself to have promotion divine promotion is the same way you are calling this person's name lord i commit to sin to your care lord whatever strongholds are in our life father we begin to break them because your word has said whatever i bind on earth has been bound in heaven whatever i losing on earth has been losing in heaven whatever spiritual attack is on this person's soul whatever it is that is making the person you know because i believe that the physical is just a manifestation of the spiritual. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you begin to pray for the person. You begin to pray that God, this person begins to have a heart of flesh. Lord, your word has said that you will write your laws upon our hearts. Your word has said that you give us a heart of flesh over a heart of stone. You begin to remind God of his promises. And trust me, faith like a mustard seed. The more you pray, the more you engage spiritually for the salvation of that person's soul. And even in real, in you know, in reality, you are actively reaching out to this person. On the person's birthday, you're buying them books. Let them not read it. Do you understand? But trust me, when all die is cast, when the person is at their lowest, they will remember the seeds that you have sown in their life. They will remember that I have a friend called Shola. They will remember that I have a friend called Cynthia. That she can pray with me. They will remember that I have a friend called Sita that 
I know that she's interceding for me for wherever she is. You don't even I don't you don't need to tell them that you're in, you're interceding for them. But even by just your your commitment to their excellence, your commitment to their growth, is even just they can tell people see people receive love. People receive love. Either they put on walls or not, they know how to receive love. So before I you know begin to just talk off the rail, that's one thing I just want to encourage you that if you you are a believer or even if you're a baby Christian but God has laid a burden upon your heart upon a friend for anybody damn the consequences don't think about oh they will say ah, I don't want to seem like I say I'm overzealous I don't want my friends to think that me that I used to follow them clubbing before suddenly I'm preaching that you cannot go clubbing start start trust me in five years five years is too long in two years they'll get with the program Three months they will get with the program. See, consistency shows result, and if you're not doing it to make them feel like, oh, look at me, I've left you. You're doing them feel that they can be directed to the cross. There's a saying that you know I heard from Vivian. That's her name. One of my good IG friends, Instagram friends, and she keeps saying that we have been showed, we have been caught in lights, we have been shown the way not to blind others. We are bright, we are strong, not to blind, but to lead them to the cross. So as you are doing this thing, the I, I have so much joy in my heart when my friends text me and be like, oh, you're saying, I know that you've been telling me this and I just watched to tell you that I got baptized last week. It's like, you know how they say that the angels in heaven are rejoicing when someone gives their life to Christ. That's this, I don't know. I have so much joy in my heart knowing that someone experienced Jesus. Not even through me. Through anybody, through an encounter with Jesus. But I, I just always pray for my friends or anybody that I'm led to encounter that I pray that they don't need to go through, you know, horrible scenarios. Some people is when they experience a the death in their family. Some people is maybe when they almost die. Some people maybe when they lose a limb before they now realize that Jesus is Lord. We don't need to get to that point. You don't need to lose something. Jesus gave up himself. He has given up everything. Jesus has given up everything. You need. You don't need to get to that point where you are an easy attack for the enemy before you realize that Jesus is Lord. So basically, the summary of this video, and I really hope that this video has been edifying. I hope that as you are watching this video, you are led to go on your knees to pray for those friends. You are led to go on your knees to pray for. And it can be your parents. It can be your cousins. It doesn't need to be friends. It can be your boss at work. Um. So that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video thank you so much and if you relate to you in any way or you have any comments please drop them in the comment box below i definitely will be reading or if you have any um contributions towards this topic leave them also in the comment box below so that other people can be edified as well and yeah that's about it thank you guys so much for watching until next time stay blessed bye, -bye.